Hello everyone, welcome to International Observer of the Moon Night and Photo Contest. Uh, this is presented by Milford Public Library and NASA Connecticut Space Grant Consortium. My name is Fred Danowski and I'm the Information Systems Librarian. And I'm going to run through a little uh, synopsis of uh, facts and history about the moon, uh, where we're going, uh, where we've been, and what NASA's plans are for the future. So, for a very long time, people have been looking up at the sky and dreaming about the moon and the stars and everything in the heavens. Poets have written poems, artists have painted paintings. Jules Verne, in 1865, wrote a book, A Trip to the Moon, uh, which kind of cemented the moon uh, in modern popular culture and man's fascination with traveling to the moon. Uh, later on, this novel was adapted for film uh, in 1902. And of course, just a short while later, uh, we think about the uh, writing of the book. Uh, it was just over a hundred years between when Verne wrote that book to when man walked on the moon, which is an incredible uh, incredibly short period of time to go from dreaming about it um, and it wasn't a hope of us doing it in 1865 to actually landing on the moon 104 years later. It's incredible. So this fascination with the moon, um, <clears throat> the moon up close. Uh, Galileo, with his first telescope, the same telescope that he observed Jupiter and Jupiter's four moons, the we call the Galilean moons today. Um, when he looked at the moon, it was his first target, of course, like it's every astronomer's first target. And he was mesmerized by the surface of the moon. Of course, he did not have a camera to record what he saw, so he journaled about it instead. So he wrote about the features on the moon in a journal, and he also did some sketches. And what we see here on this slide is uh, from Galileo's first sketches of the lunar surface. Um, astronomers today uh, keep observing journals, and they do sketches still, um, even even though that you know we have cameras and that. Uh, you take pictures. Uh, there is some sketching being done today. Um, you can look at the moon as well with your naked eyes, of course, as well as through binoculars. If you have binoculars, try it out. The moon looks great through binoculars. So next up here, we have some lunar facts. So the moon is ancient. The moon formed just after the solar system formed and the Earth formed. Uh, the solar system and Earth formed uh, roughly four and a half billion years ago. So we're talking eons. 50 million years, which is nothing compared to four and a half billion years after that. Well, that's when um, they think, the current theory anyway, is that a rock, an object the size of Mars, sheared off by hitting the Earth, a piece of the Earth, and created the moon. That's the best theory as to how the moon was created today. Um, it, that impact was also responsible for the Maria and the way the moon looks uh, today. The idea was that the heat from the molten earth after the impact actually scorched the moon into its look uh, from the earth today. So what do we have here? The moon has an orbital period of 27.3 days. Its orbital speed is uh, just over a half mile a second, so it's moving pretty good. Its distance is uh, just over a quarter million miles away, 239,000. Uh, it has quite a temperature range from shadow to sunlight. It is negative 387 in shadow and in the sun, it is 253 degrees. So the moon is only 1.2% that of Earth's. The surface area is only 7.4% that of Earth's. It is tidally locked, which means that it does not rotate on an axis 
like the Earth does. One side always faces the Earth, the side that is very familiar to us. Is not in a stable orbit. Uh, most people think that the moon is in a completely stable orbit, and it's not. The moon's speed has enough energy behind it to put it in a slightly unstable orbit. So every single year, the moon gets about an inch and a half farther away from the Earth, and it's been doing this for four and a half billion years. Uh, to think how big the moon would have been in the sky during the time of the dinosaurs tens of millions of years ago would be incredible. So what do we have here? Well, <laughs> the geology, the geographic features of the moon itself, the seas, maria, or the low areas, tend to be the darker areas, the craters, from all the impacts over the eons, preserved because there's no erosion, there's no rain, there's no atmosphere. And the same with the mountain ranges on the moon. Here we have a very famous crater, the Cornipercus Crater. So, Crater Clavius, another very famous crater here. This is near the south pole of the moon. It's also not too far away from Crater Tycho, which is just out of the image here to the left. Uh, this is an ancient crater, uh, 3.9 billion years old. It is huge. It is almost 150 miles across, and it is unique because of that series of... It, it's an arcing line of smaller craters inside uh, Clavius. Uh, Clavius is... Other claim to fame is that it's the setting for uh, the, the book and film 2001 A Space Odyssey. It is where humans find the obelisk. Up next here is a uh, look at the moons, the major moons anyway, of the solar system compared to Earth's moon and the Earth itself. And as you can see here, the Earth's moon is actually kind of freakish uh, in size compared to our size, uh, compared to how all the other moons uh, look around the other planets. I mean, if you look at this, uh, you know, the moon and Jupiter's moon Io are roughly the same size, but Jupiter is absolutely enormous. Um, so compared to Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto are these tiny little things. When, if you look at the moon alongside of the Earth, um, it's a pretty substantial size. That was quite an impact that happened right after the solar system formed. Um, just to point out a couple other things about this chart here, uh, the moons are listed uh, in their orbital uh positions around these planets. So Io is closest to Jupiter and Callisto is farthest away. Um, Ganymede is in fact the biggest moon in the solar system. It's a pretty good piece of real estate. Titan, Saturn's moon, is also a large moon. Um, and uh, Neptune's moon, Triton, is also quite a large moon for the size of Neptune. Moving on here, I wanted to mention the pivotal lunar missions up to this point. So, of course, we have Apollo, that Apollo 11, the culmination of uh, bringing man and setting foot on the moon. Last Apollo mission was Apollo 17. That was the last time that we were on the moon. Um, more recent missions of note, the Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL. GRAIL is a lunar satellite. We put that uh, probe in orbit around the moon a while ago, and it's been mapping the crust of the moon. Its companion, uh, which was launched a short time after that, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, has been for over a decade now mapping the surface of the moon in great high-resolution detail. And you can see pictures of the lunar surface uh, from the LRO, um, from links that I will provide at the end of this presentation. More recently, China's Chang'e 5 probe landed on the dark side of the moon, the far side of the moon, and it has been taking some amazing pictures that we have never seen 
before uh, that surface uh, on the side that faces away from us. Just some incredible pictures that you can also look at later on. Of course, ultimately this brings us to NASA's new Artemis program and going back to the moon. Um, Artemis uh, initially will consist of three missions. Artemis 1, which will be, uh, it's a impending mission, it's going to launch within the next few weeks. Um, that will be unmanned. It's basically a test of all the systems, hardware, software, comm systems, telemetry, everything for the program. Artemis 2 will bring a crew of people around the moon. And of course, the entire thing will culminate in Artemis 3, which will bring people back to the surface of the moon. Um, sometime after that, uh, NASA intends to build a lunar space station called the Lunar Gateway or Gateway Station. And that will be a staging area along with uh, a moon base that NASA intends to build at Shackleton Crater, located at Luna's South Pole. Um, Shackleton Crater is a great location for a lunar base because water has been found there. Um, it is located almost directly at the South Pole of the Moon. In fact, the pole itself is right on the crater rim of Shackleton Crater. So NASA intends to use this base, Shackleton Base, and a gateway station, a staging areas for mining operations <clears throat> on the moon, as well as missions to Mars. And I would imagine for mining operations in the asteroid belt as well in the future. Lastly here, NASA is considering mining helium-3 as an energy source. Uh, helium-3 is abundant. It's a wonderful energy resource that's only abundant on the moon. Um, but this would give us access to it, and the possibilities from there for energy uh, are tremendous. Um, helium-3 is not something really found on Earth because of our atmosphere, but the moon, the way the solar radiation hits the lunar soil, it just lends itself to creating helium-3. So, observing the moon. Observing the moon on October 1st, observe the moon night. Of course, you don't have to observe the moon on uh, observe the moon night. But if you do participate in the photo contest, you have to take a picture on that evening of October 1st, 2022. Um, bring a camera, enter the photography contest. I will provide the link on the next page. How will the moon look? On October 1st, well, you're seeing exactly what the moon will look like on October 1st. It will be a waxing crescent that's 33% illuminated. Should be wonderful for uh, looking at the craters and the maria. Sunset on October 1st is at 6.34 p.m. Look to the southern sky. The moon will rise and it will be in the southern sky. A telescope is not required um, to participate in this event but it could make things a little better, or binoculars even. Um, dress warm, I would suggest, and maybe bring a snack, and uh, just remember to have a good time and enjoy yourself, and think about the moon and look up at the moon the way our ancestors did thousands of years ago. So, where can you get more information? Uh, you can get official NASA lunar handouts and activities <clears throat> at these websites that I provided right here. NASA's official event page for International Observe the Moon Night. The second link, <clears throat> excuse me, is the official photo contest. Uh, information on the photo contest, uh, the prizes, how to enter. And lastly, I provided a link to NASA's lunar activities page, including tips for viewing and imaging the moon. Now, I encourage everybody to go out there and have a good time. Take care from Milford Public Library.